You you so, have to deliver results. You have to deliver results for, for you to exactly. succeed today in age. They, 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 there's, there's usually a lot on the underneath that you can only fake and pretend for so long. Like, okay, well, I'm not going to try to throw shade, but I'm just going to objectively comment on the reality of what's happening in our existence right now. Uh, mystery, right? Uh, mental breakdowns like weekly on, on Facebook and has no money. And he's talking about how he wants to get his nursing degree. Uh, Roosh, uh, is like full on religious fanatic now, uh, telling everybody that the, you know, the, that thing you put inside your body is a mark of, is the mark of the beast and Jesus is coming. So repent, enter poverty, quite frankly, giving a pretty bad message in my opinion, telling guys like, you know, just embrace poverty. But you can't say that when you're a guy like him and you have all these digital revenue streams that are available mm. to you. And all these guys that like led the 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 PUA revolution, I really don't think it was a PUA revolution. I think these guys just got to the market first, and then they had really good marketing skills. Mm. And mm. and then guys, sex sells itself. It's like if it's like if you sell cocaine and you're like, oh, I'm a great salesman. Like, no, you're not. You're selling cocaine. Mm. Like the sales the sales already done. It's like a girl's like, I'm a great <laughs> prostitute. Like, no, you're not. Guys want pussy. It's like the, the, it's already built in for you to succeed. Well there certainly was a golden age, I think, of that, where a lot of guys who were early adopters who got in there first did make a ton of money. And um, the degree to which those guys were selling a message that was valuable or responsible is, is I guess, in question now, you know? Um, but I think just being an early starter in that field, yeah, there was a shit ton of money to be made. These days, I think, I think what we all know is that if you're going to, make a name for yourself in this space and you're going to make it sustainable you've got to have a a message and a reputation that is durable because otherwise you know you're just going to get found out you you so, have to deliver results you have to deliver results for for you to exactly. succeed today in age exactly exactly and that's why i mean tusk you've got your whole google uh, page full of reviews from clients haven't you from uh, from boot camps yeah, my mum uh, helped me write most of them, but yeah, some of them are legit. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your mum's basement? Yes, of course. You can see. I've, I've, I've decided to match MLD's uh, leopard skin. <laughs> I have my leopard skin, my, my sexy <laughs> leopard skin. I bought it from the charity shop. cost me 99 cents. So, uh, nice. Um, nice. No, I agree. And, and actually, one of, the, one of the... He won't mind me talking about it because he's openly admitted it, but one of the... Big early adopters in the UK scene from off the game was a guy called Richard Laruna, who guys online will know as Gambler. He he now, in hindsight, because he's made millions, doesn't give a fuck. But he he set up the company when he'd only slept with two women. You know, Whoa. This last, last pickup guy, right? And it what? Was, it, it, yeah, and it was um. This is in the what in was the his day, company called? PUA Training. Hmm. He actually went on, you, you must have seen he went on, uh, Troy, he went on Piers Morgan's show and got destroyed. He basically said all British women are fat and ugly. But he I saw did that, that yeah, yeah. because he had a game called Super Seducer coming out the week after. He knew, regardless of whether he got destroyed or not, it's going to be great publicity. So it's actually a very smart move. Genius. His point of view. Yeah. Mm, mm. yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, I would say this, right? And I think you and you guys here fall into the category as well, right? Um, typically, after you sort out your pussy, usually the next thing you want to sort out is your money, right? And naturally, all three of us took our, pers our, our pussy getting skills, monetized them, and have built quite a strong following between the three of us, mm -hmm. I would say pretty reputable. And, um, you know, after you get, as, the ma as a man, after you get all the pussy, and your money is pretty much, you know, we have, we have, we live in relative abundance, you know, like you got your Troy, you're out in Moscow, just hanging out. I live in Tokyo, James, you frolic across the earth, like, you know, <laughs> annually. You like, make me just, sound like something from Lord of the Rings, frolicking. You know, like just like, but you know, you, you, I've watched your channel, like, you know, you're just like, you're jacked, you're good looking, you're going from country to country. You're like, you know, you're living the life. and. I think that that kind of brings you to like a, a crossroad and when you're just like, Oh fuck, like I've pretty much achieved everything. And then you kind of like, you know, you, you, you could get, 
you go you you could get a little dark in regards to like understanding the the futile nature of everything we because we're all going to die eventually and it mm -hmm. gets a little it gets a little existential right and it's it's funny cuz mac makes fun of me mac mac the day gamer he's like how the fuck do you have an existential crisis in your apartment cuz i have like a pretty nice penthouse apartment he's like oh he's like you just sit here in the in the wind in the mirror and you're like oh i'm going to die one day <laughs> i was just like you know you don't get it but um I think that's something guys need to aspire to getting the money handled, getting the women handled. So then you can decide what do I really want to do with my life to, to really uh, fulfill yourself. Right. I guess it's like the top of the self-actualization is, is returning to society or like some sort of, mm. um, uh, philanthropy is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's 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 funny because I think we've all had conversations about this. I know I've had conversations with John about this and with with James separately. And I think I think we're all sort of I don't know. It's interesting. It's something that is probably concerns all of us from time to time, which is this sense of, well, I'm doing this and I'm kind of living a life perhaps that I've always wanted to live more or less. Mm -hmm. But but then what? You know, and it's that sense of, but am I really doing what I actually want to be doing? And there is this sense of the march of time and the fact that you know, we've all only really got a few useful decades on this planet. And um, are we using them in the, in the most optimal way? And I think that's something that, um, and, and, you know, that just going after girls the whole time, making sex your higher power is obviously futile. But even when you sort of put that in its box and sort of put that to one side, then you've got to think, okay, re what, are, what are the things that I actually really, really want to do while I'm on this planet? What is the, you know, what is the dent that I want to make in the universe, as Rich would say? And um, that is a question I think we've all got to try and grapple with an answer. Yeah. Mm. And it's it's the Pukowski thing, isn't it? I did this live stream when I was absolutely half cut in a seedy hotel room in Mexico with a bottle of tequila and a pack of Marlboros. And uh, it's that Bukowski thing of find what you love and let it kill you. And, you know, yes. in Vino Veritas, I was absolutely hammered. So the emotions coming out, but I was like, I got into this job because it's basically something that I was very passionate about. But as you get more into it, I've been involved in this industry for 10 years. As, as you say, John, you, 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 you think, right, what else is there? Because you've kind right. of ticked that off and, and you need to do that. And it's, it's that concept as well as the boss is always watching. I think deep down in our subconscious, if we really sit there with a pen and paper and no distractions, we know what the things in life that scare us. We know what we need to kind of do to cross that Rubicon. And we know on a personal level whether we're bullshitting ourselves. And it's a conversation that every man needs to have with themselves. But yeah, you have to get the, 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 you have to bang a sufficient number of women to get that kind of handled. So that's not an obstacle that's kind of clouding your entire vision. Now, once that's out of the fucking way, right, what else is there? Most men don't get the pussy side handled. So they never can then progress to this kind of period of, right, what's actually going to self actualize me on a deeper level? Because we are going to die one day. And essentially, all you've got to do in life is fill your time with that is meaning to, meaningful to you live your truth but finding that truth is is takes balls it takes facing your fears you have to experiment with different things most men aren't prepared to go through that because it's too personal you're ripping open too much scar tissue there um mm. but it is whether you want to die living a lie knowing you're living a lie because no one else knows it's, it's up to you right at the end of the day mm. i would say that um you know this is the this is a demon that haunts a lot of fucking men is they are chasing the the like the 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 phantom pussy right it's a, it's almost like gambling because they don't understand the methodology because I'm pretty sure you know I'm pretty sure you guys when you sit down on a date and you can tell a girl's keen you're like oh, okay we are totally gonna fucking have sex right you just know you're like this bitch is dumb like she's gonna do it you know <laughs> and uh, you can see her you, you know her playing her game and you know like okay i'm just gonna do this and just do this and do this and i'm gonna fuck her right and i think once you get that level of understanding like i'm not surprised when i go on dates i'm just like i know what's gonna happen right mm -hmm. and <clears throat> i think once you solve the mystique the mystery of it all it really loses the allure, right? I think after, I would say after a guy fucks like 100 chicks, right? Because once you figure it out, you can fuck 100 chicks pretty quickly. And once you get to that number, then you kind of realize like, okay, this is kind of like a negative ROI in regards to my life. I agree. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. 
And I think a lot of guys, they like, you know, they're just, they're, they're like pulling a slot on a slot machine. You know, they're just like, okay, like, am I going to get some pussy? Like, oh, fuck. Oh no, not this time. Like, okay, let me like fucking pull this one and do this and that. But they really just don't know what the fuck they're doing. But when you actually yeah. solve it, it does lose its, its allure. It's, it's mystique. And that's what I, I do with my guys.